Okay, we finished watching some videos to get our feet wet with the program Adobe Illustrator. Now we're gonna go ahead and start our font creation. The first thing I'm gonna do is have my blueprint handy. I'm gonna make sure I have the hard copy handy so I can just take a look at it when I need to reference it to make my font creation. You can also scan in your blueprint and then have it digitally so you can refer back to it as well as go to Illustrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my digital Lee scanned blueprint. I'm gonna to go to where I saved it, which is under my documents, and just double click on the blueprint. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it and just close out of that window there. Now you notice the blueprint is minimized in my task bar. You can see I can open it when needed. So I'm just going to keep it in my taskbar for now. The next thing I'm going to do is open up Adobe Illustrator. The icon looks like an orange flower. I'm going to double left click on it and this is the CS2 version. Orange you glad I showed you that. Speaking of orange, it's the orange flower. Make sure you do not register and click close out of that window. Now here is the Adobe Illustrator CS2 menu. This is a quick way to get a new document open. Let's say you accidentally close out of this or it didn't show up. You can go to File, New. And the keyboard shortcut for that is holding Control and then pressing N on the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Control and hit N to make a new document. The new document window will pop up. Now remember, you can bypass this in the CS2 menu and just clicking new document if you're allowed to. I'm gonna go ahead and name this document font space creations space my initials Kevin Scott Fogelson but you can call me Mr. F. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my orientation is either a portrait or a landscape. Looking at my blueprint you could see that the height is longer than the width. So I'm going to keep at a portrait. Now let's say your width was longer than your height. You're going to want a landscape. Think of this as a hamburger as a portrait and a hot dog as a landscape. Now I'm hungry. Awesome. All right, to take your mind off of that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK on the portrait because I have a portrait. I'm going to click OK. Now let's say hypothetically that everything is not in the right spot or it's disappeared. You could go ahead and go to Window, Workspace, Default. Window, Workspace, Default. And everything will come up the way that your Adobe Illustrator should look. I have my toolbar, colors, and layers. Now I'm ready to work on my font creation. I'm going to go ahead and open up my blueprint. The first thing I'm going to start to work on is the I. To make the I, I'm going to use the letter O. Okay, hopefully that wasn't confusing. So the eyeball is going to be in here, and the whole I is going to be an O. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize my blueprint and go to the Type tool. You see in the type tool, the shortcut for the type tool in parentheses is T. Make sure you hit T on your keyboard. You'll notice that it goes to the type tool. If you go to these other options, your type tool will not work at this point. So make sure you just press T to get to the type tool. Also when placing your type, just click, left click on your mouse to throw down the cursor. And you'll notice that cursor is blinking. Now if I hit Control Z to undo, let's say you accidentally clicked and dragged a text box. This won't give you the freedom that you need when making your font creation. So I'm going to hit Control Z. You don't want to drag when making your type. I'm going to go ahead and again with my mouse left click once and make sure I have a blinking cursor. I'm going to go ahead and make an O right here. So I'm going to press on my keyboard the letter O. 
The next thing I'm going to do is manipulate it. So I'm going to want to go to the selection tool. You'll notice the selection tool, the shortcut is V is in victory. So I click on the selection tool and you'll notice that I'm able to click on it. Here's where you can go to the corner of that box and you'll see two arrows pointed in the opposite direction in a diagonal line. You can go ahead and now drag it out like this conversation we're having. Taking a look at my blueprint, I'm going to make sure that everything lines up accordingly. Maybe a little too big. I could always make adjustments later. So now that I dragged out the corner, I could just click in the box and move it to where I want. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how you can change the font style to make it look even the more stylistic to the way you want it. So in looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and right click on my mouse when it's selected, go to font, and you can see there's a whole array of fonts to choose from. I could hit this down arrow here and go to even more. I'm going to go ahead and select this font right here. No, I don't like that, so I'm going to go ahead and right click font and try this one. No, still don't like it. So it's always good to kind of find a font that you will deem necessary and that fits your liking. I like that. Yeah, very cool. So I'm going to go back to my blueprint. I'm referencing, referencing it. And you'll notice there's a little tear duct here. So I'm going to go ahead and make that tear duct. Now it's important to follow this step in the font creation. Take a look at what happens. I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to go to T for type tool. Don't worry, that's not the mistake yet. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to make that tear duct here and I click. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the tear duct letter, which would be probably like a U. So I'm going to go ahead and make a U. I don't like that U, so I'm going to try a lowercase. I'm going to go ahead and select a different font. Let's go with Mirrored and U. There we go. Now, if you notice, when I clicked that and made that type, when I go to the selection tool, oh no, it's stuck. There's two ways out of this. You can go to right click create outlines, then right click, ungroup, and now you click off of it and click back on and now you can have freedom to move. This is going to be nice so you can separate each letter. However, when you right click and go to fonts, you're unable to change the style. The letter has now become points or anchor points or now a vector shape. It is not type anymore. This is kind of a nice cheat so you can work on manipulating your fonts within each other. The other way around this is if you go ahead and you click on your letter, right click, create outlines, and then go to your type tool, click again, and then type out your next letter then you're going to go ahead and have to manipulate it the way you want. So there's two ways to do that. Like I always say, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's Pieces butter, uh, peanut butter cup. There's no wrong way to do the same thing in Adobe Illustrator as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm looking at the tear duct and I want to rotate it so that it fits sideways on that eye. Or should I say, oh. I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down a little bit. And now I'm going to try and rotate it. So I'm going to bring my selection tool. Remember, the selection tool shortcut is V. Good. And I'm going to go to the near the corner. And you'll notice I have a curve with two arrows. This is how we rotate. I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag. Now you'll notice my cursor is not on the boxes or anything. It's above the boxes near the right corner. Now that I have the curve with two arrows, I'm just going to click and drag 
and make it so I have the tear duct. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move it over with the arrow keys now. I use the left arrow key three times. Looking at the blueprint, this is starting to look like a nice piece of artwork. I'm also gonna to wanna to make type in the middle of the eyeball. So I'm gonna go hit the type tool, T for type, click once with my type tool, and then make an O, drag it out, and make the eyeball. Now a lot of people ask me this with this font creations project. Should we fill in this, you know, part of this um, letter here? And the answer is no. And the reason why I tell you that is because if we start filling in these letters within this white space with color, then it stops becoming a font creation and starts becoming shapes. So the whole goal of this project is to create letters so that we can see our font creation. Now don't forget with the type tool, again, if you click in your overlapping type, you have to create outlines. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo, go to the selection key, right click, create outlines, and you'll notice I can now go to the type tool, click, Shift O, and work with my font creation here. One of the important things also with the font creation is adding color. The way we add color is like this. So let's say I want to make this eye brown. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the color fill, which is right here. So I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna to go to my color range and I'm gonna bring it on the rainbow towards the brown colors. Now you must, don't forget to select the color you could go with a shade or a tint. More white is a tint, more dark is a shade. And I'm gonna go ahead and go with a brown, which is towards the shade or the dark side. Remember, they have cookies. I'm gonna click OK. And you'll notice I've changed the color of the I, or should I say O letter. I can also do that with other items in the font. I'm going to go ahead and double left click. Make sure you have the item selected on what color you want to change. And I'm going to go with a little bit of a lighter brown for the tear duct. Okay, here's an issue that people run into. I'm going to hold the space bar and click and drag to move the hand tool to move to where I want to actually see everything. Now you'll notice that the tear duct is now going in front of the O here. I want to bring this to the back. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the tear duct, or the U, have it selected with the selection key, which is V, so use the shortcut, click on the U, right click, arrange, send the back. Again, right click, arrange, send the back. And now it is behind the other letters. Okay, I hope this video tutorial was useful and I, you see what I did there? Hope you can see, you see what I did there? This video is a huge help in your font creation project. This is just the beginning of something that's going to be very awesome. All right, so plug away, take your time, and make sure that you use the type tool appropriately. Because I think this type of project will benefit you. All right, good luck.